Hi, uh, my name is Leanne Schmidt. I'm a filmmaker based in Los Angeles. Um, my project's a performance-based film and installation entitled So That I May Come Back. And in some ways, this uh, project's a little bit of a departure for me, but in a lot more ways, it's much more of a return. For the last 12 years, I've made a series of political essay films shot on 16 millimeter, driving across the country, shooting landscapes on my Bolex, sleeping in my truck, editing on a flatbed in my basement, and working in a way you could call aggressively solitary. But when I began making work in the 1990s, I began as a member of a five-woman performance collective called the Babo Performance Project, which was based in Chicago. And we lasted as a company for almost 10 years, making deeply visual, physically-based spectacle work before funding and personal ambitions broke us up. And we developed all of our work collaboratively, often in these workshops and rehearsals that would last over months or even years, and this is what I want to return to in this new project, this idea of an extended process and collaboration. And what you're watching is footage from one of these early workshops. I shot this 20 years ago. This is some of the first film I ever shot. And actually shooting this film has made me what uh, interested in making films and being a filmmaker. After years of making performances, I wanted to make tangible images. I wanted to make images that would last and stay and be a document of a time. And I was 24 years old when I made this and I was deeply inspired by Joan Jonas and Yvonne Rayner. I read a lot of crime novels. I worked in a bar, and I regularly had dreams where I'd be covered over with this thick layer of sand, and I'd wake up unable to move. So That I May Come Back is inspired by the case of Mary Bell, who at 10 years old in 1968 was convicted of murdering two small boys in her neighborhood. First, four-year-old Martin Brown, and then two months later, three-year-old Brian Howe. And I got interested in Mary when I read two books about her, both written by the same author, but one was written in 1972 and one was written in 1984. And in the first, Mary's portrayed as absolutely without remorse. The question of the book is if it's possible for a child to be evil. She's called mannish and ugly, and it's suggested she's sexually deviant. But in the second, written in 1984, the author reveals this long history of sexual abuse Mary suffered at the hands of her prostitute mother, Betty, who began pimping out her daughter when she was only four and once tried to throw her out of a second-story window. So in the first book, Mary's this degendered psychopath, but in the second, she's absolutely female, and she's a victim, and she's defined by that trauma. And when you insist on just telling one narrative, you occlude the potential for all the others. So this spring, I plan to begin a series of extended workshops to create the script and language around this piece, working with choreographers and performers. I'm going to shoot the film in 2016. And these workshops will draw not only on the Mary Bell trial transcripts, but also reenactments of crime scene photos, pornography, childhood games, and developmental psychology. Because while this piece is beginning with Mary Bell, it's really about shame and trauma. It's about the female physical self and the idea of violence, because we get so used to seeing the female body in danger. A great deal of popular entertainment absolutely relies on it, but what do you do to honor anger? And how do you make work about trauma without recreating it? And in 1984, I was 13 years old, and there's always much more than one thing happening at a time. So all my work is really anecdotal, it's fragmentary, it's really personal, even when I pretend it's not. Recently, I began a new body of work. It's really diaristic, and somehow it relates to the Mary Bell piece. I want to return to a really instinctual process with this work, to gesture, and absolutely to collectivism. And I remain interested in all those places in between in this story, in all those experiences that got lost when they got put to language. A few weeks before she killed her first victim, Mary Bell broke into a schoolhouse and she vandalized a classroom and she left behind a note that said, I murder so that I may come back. And a few days after she murdered her first victim, before their body was even found, Mary knocked on their parents' door and said, can Martin come out and play? And at her trial, she said, if you choke someone, do they die? And then she said, murder's not so bad. We all die someday anyhow. And there's a psychological test you give to children where they're asked to draw a house 
and then a tree, and then a person, and then they're asked, who lives in this house? What grows on this tree? Who takes care of this person? Who keeps them safe? And in our original workshops 20 years ago, we asked, what's the worst thing you've ever done to someone else? What's the worst thing someone else ever did to you? So currently, I'm looking for performers to be involved in this extended uh, workshop. I'm looking for places to hold these workshops and residencies, too. I'm also looking for sculptors or fabricators to help with the construction of several sculptural elements that will be in the film and in the installations. A lot of my work features music scored by my partner, Jeff Parker, who's a member of the band Tortoise and a jazz musician. And I'm first focusing on this as a film, but I also want to present it as a live performance curating evenings around performance, film, and music from the project. And I'm looking for venues to collaborate with. Jeff and I had a son a few years ago, now he's four. And sometimes they'll ask me, Mama, will I die? And I say, no, not for a long time. But then he'll ask, Mama, will you die? And I say, no, baby, not yet. And eventually, everything I make begins to feel like autobiography. Mary Bell was released from custody when she was 23. She was given a new name, and shortly thereafter, she herself had a child. She has, by all accounts, lived a normal life. Thank you so much. <laughs>